so much telly and let's keep making some news with our dear friend Nigel Farage. Now, Nigel, let's bring people up to speed with the latest when it comes to your banking affairs. Here's how our colleagues in the UK reported it and I will step off from there. Have a look. When Coots cancelled Farage, they probably should have known he'd be a tricky ex-customer. He's now published a document that he says he obtained from Coots that explains why they closed his bank account. It cites extreme, hateful and emotive language, xenophobic, chauvinistic and racist views, and says he's considered by many to be a disingenuous grifter. But of course, all of that was based off a whole bunch of BS they were being fed. There was dinners with BBC journalists, apologies had been issued everywhere, and the Prime Minister is now calling in the heads of the banks to say what happened to Nigel can't happen to anyone else. What a week, my friend! <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty extraordinary. I have to say, um, to dominate the front pages of the British newspapers day after day after day is pretty remarkable, uh, because this has struck a chord. And the reason is that this new extreme left liberalism has now run right the way through our public institutions, but also most of our corporate sector too. And the banks have now taken it upon themselves to be highly political and indeed to be the moral arbiters for what is acceptable for us to say or do. So for reasons of pure political prejudice and bigotry, my account was cancelled. And I, I thought to myself, what do I do? Do I go quietly? Do I just sort of drift away and not, you know, subject myself, frankly, to embarrassment and humiliation? And then I realised this was happening to too many people in my country and too many people across the Western world. And no one has stood up and fought against these horrible, bullying, woke uh, people. So I decided to go public. And you know what? I've had a public apology from the chairman, from the chairman of the, or the CEO rather, of the banking group, a public apology from the BBC, which never happens. Gosh, I'm going to frame that one. <laughs> um, and the fact the Prime Minister has acted so quickly, I, I hope, I hope this is the Bud Light moment for British banking. I hope this is the minute at which we actually get a reversal of all this nonsense, this extreme ideology being forced on the majority by a minority. And I've got to tell you, uh, Paul, there's no question about it. Um, I'm going to fight this, and I'm going to fight this new corporate culture all the way. Yeah, because, I mean, it is pervasive. It isn't so much. But for it to be such a stark example that, for obvious reasons, it wasn't about your finances, it was about what they deemed about your character, and when they couldn't even prove anything on your character, they made stuff up about what your character is informed by your politics. And... If anyone's character is defined by their politics, then we are in a really creepy place because you could be the wildest, craziest, mad lefty and you deserve just as much rights to uh, travel on a train, have a bank account and all the rest of it. It's China that depersons people because of what they believe. And if that's happening in the Western world, well, it's now been proven that it's happening in the heart of European finance in, uh, in London, then imagine all the other stuff that's happening. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, getting rid of your bank account, denying you a bank account is the ultimate form of cancel culture. We cannot survive in the modern world without a bank account. You effectively become a non-person. Uh, and, we, and we do head towards the communist Chinese social credit model, where only by publicly apologising for all of your previous views are you allowed to take part in society. It cannot be allowed to happen. This issue is part of the very existential battle that we've got to defend Western civilization. And I, if, if that sounds grand and highfalutin, well, I mean it. This is absolutely fundamental. This is a battle of freedom of speech, freedom of the individual against authoritarian control. And uh, I, do you know what? I promise you, I am never going to let this go. Never.